through the generous contribution of Dr. Lewis's family, we're very fortunate to be able to share with you these timeless recordings of Dr. M. W. Lewis, a self-realized American yogi. Dr. Lewis was Paramahansa Yogananda's first American disciple and dearest personal friend. The wisdom Dr. Lewis imparts through these teachings will give you a dynamic and practical insight into the ancient science of yoga as taught by Paramahansa Yogananda. This lecture's title is Attaining Inner Peace, Three of Three, and was delivered in San Diego, California on February 7, 1960. So our subject this morning, Attaining Inner Peace. Attaining inner peace. I remember when Master first came here years ago, he brought with him a picture of Swami Ram. He was a, a little man, and he was seated, I remember, on a little stool just up off the floor in lotus posture. And he used to say, Peace like a river flows through me. Peace like a river, flows through me. Master said it a little differently. He said it this way. When thy song flows through me, then life is sweet and death is sweet. And so it is that inner peace which we must have. That inner peace, and that comes not from outward consciousness, but from inner consciousness Inner peace is of God. One interesting thing I remember Swami Ram used to say, and I imagine perhaps that's why he had so much inner peace. He said, blessed are those who do not read the newspapers. <laughs> Which I think is, is pretty good now. Every time I read it, I vow I'm not going to get any more. But there are certain world events and things which... And I remember distinctly, Master said, you know what he used to say? Blessed are those who don't read the newspaper. <laughs> he had a better chance of attaining that inner peace. And so Swami Ram was not speaking of ordinary peace of mind, but he was speaking of that which is a negative state. He is speaking of that positive state of consciousness, inner peace, or the peace of the presence of God. We have to make a distinction between these two things. Ordinary peace, ordinary peace of mind, and inner peace. Ordinary peace of mind is simply a relief from the turmoil of a racing, restless mind. And you know what that is. And sometimes when you get relief from that, there is a certain peace, but it's not real inner peace. It is called ordinary peace of mind, which is an emotional adjustment by the intellect and gives self-control. Just remember that. It's an emotional adjustment. So intellect, you stop that racing mind, and by so doing, you attain this ordinary peace of mind. But that's far different from the inner peace, which is of God. And so this ordinary peace of mind can be attained by regulating your ordinary living, your mental hygiene and bodily conduct, bodily habits, and then by self-control. Following that with self-control, you can attain this ordinary peace of mind, which is good but it does not carry us far enough. It will give you self-control, and thereby you attain ordinary peace of mind. Please make the distinction between peace of mind and true inner peace, which is a state of consciousness not negative like ordinary peace of mind is. It seems positive when you attain it, but you'll never be satisfied with it because it's a negative state. It's a cessation from something, which is good. That's a good start. But that must be followed with a positive state, which is the inner peace of God. It is a cosmic force. Inner peace is a cosmic force. 
Just like cosmic love, cosmic light, which sometimes you see in your meditation, cosmic calmness, cosmic sound. These are all positive states of God consciousness. And cosmic peace is true inner peace. See, one is positive. The second will not come until you have achieved the first. With a racing mind, you cannot achieve that positive state of inner peace. They do not go together. One is the unity of God's consciousness. The other is duality of outward consciousness. They will not merge until you have stilled the waves of the mind. And then they flow together in perfect harmony. And while there is the restlessness of the outer consciousness, of ego, that vibration will not unify, so to speak, with the single vibration of God's inner peace, cosmic peace, until it has ceased its oscillations, until the restlessness has passed away and the lake of the mind is still. So now you can see the difference between one negative aspect and the positive aspect, and we will not be satisfied because we are that positive aspect. We manifest the outward aspect of ordinary peace of mind but that's not our true nature. Our true nature is inner cosmic peace. And those who meditate taste it. And those who meditate more finally become that. And those who keep at it everlastingly are able at will.